No. <laughs> Ready. <laughs> well, I can use the F word on YouTube. You can definitely say moonshot. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, uh, combinatorics rap. Um, you ready? Hmm? So close. You're so close. I know, yeah, that's bugging me out a little bit. You can be that close to me. You can walk through there. Okay, all right. No, 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 no. All right, all good. So, welcome, voting class of um, 2000, etc. Um, now 258, rap. This is my very first voting rap. I'm a little nervous. Okay. Uh, so this is a rap about combinatorics. I'll be feeding you theory and pushing rhetorics. You can count with your fingers or you can count with your mind. But the latter is the way combinatorialists have a good time. Let's break this rap up into two disjoint cases. First we, sh <laughs> first we show graph theory, then we show enumerative faces. Case one. Sorry. Uh, Graph theory. In 1700, in an old Prussian town called Königsberg, um, seven bridges connected two islands to two banks and each other word like this. <laughs> <laughs> Königsberg. Two banks, two islands. This is water because that's a boat. This is land because that's a tree. <laughs> call it A, call it B, call it C, call it D. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Frenchburg, this is a classic good old problem. The townspeople have tried to cross one bridge at a time and come back to the place where they started and find that no bridge was crossed twice in this walk they took. They couldn't solve this problem, but they knew where to look. Enter the mother of graph theory. <laughs> in 1700, she did give birth to all of graph theory, but the labor didn't hurt, because the mother was a brother named <laughs> Lemon Euler. And he cooked up graph theory like chicken in a broiler. <laughs> Lenny. Smart guy. <laughs> um, Instead of the Königsberg pictures of land masses and water, water, Lenny Euler said, each land mass is just a dot. And if a bridge connects two dots, then a line we've got. Um, there you got it, in a nutshell. That is graph theory. Dots and lines, dots and lines, so your eyes get bleary. So Lenny Euler's picture would be a multigraph. <laughs> 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 so that's it. He looked at that and said, this is your problem. Um, you want to walk this graph crossing each edge once. Euler said, each time you pass through a dot, you use two edges. Brilliance! That was the key to the bridge problem, you see. A connected graph has an Euler cycle if and only if it has all vertices of even degree. <laughs> um, it's a parody thing, you see. Even or odd for a graph, homie G. <laughs> right. There's a lot more to say about graph theory, but this graph would get old and your ears would get weary. Like, does a Hamiltonian circuit exist in this graph? <laughs> oh, that's no fair. That's MP complete. I'll pass. <laughs> Uh, there was more graphs there, but, or the tut graph, but you already know about the tut graph. Um, okay, let's move on now to case two. Uh, this is where you pay your enumeration counting dues. So you think that you know that you know how to count? How many ways? are there to distribute to distribute eight balls into six boxes with the first two boxes having at most four balls. If the balls are identical. That ain't. So that's the question to count. 
What's the amount? Can you count? This problem is a horse, but can you mount? Ooh. <laughs> <Sweet>. <laughs> okay. This is where I need a DJ, but I don't have one. Combinations, permutations, arrangements, selections, and distributions, factorial disk, generating function, that. Counting with these tools makes counting fat. <laughs> the problem with the problem above is to get your head around the constraints involved. You got eight balls, and they're all alike, and they go into six boxes. So just draw something like box one, <laughs> box two, box three, box four, box five, box six. Um, boom. In the first two boxes, we got a constraint. They got at most four balls, so five or more ain't. So we split the problem up into disjoint situations and then add the totals up because that's the additive principle of enumeration. I need a slide for this. Uh, okay. Um, so, if zero balls are in the first two boxes, then there's 11 choose eight ways to put the rest in the four remaining boxes. That's case one. <laughs> there's two choose, one, two choose one ways to put one ball in the first two boxes and 10 choose seven ways to put the remaining four in the, the remaining seven in the four remaining boxes. There's three to choose two ways to put two balls in the first two boxes and nine choose six ways to put the remaining six in the four remaining boxes. There's four choose three ways to put two balls in the first two boxes, and eight choose five ways to put the remaining five in the four remaining boxes. This is getting kind of redundant. Um, <laughs> there's four, five choose four ways to put two balls, four balls in the first two boxes, and that many ways to put the four in, in the four remaining boxes. All right, at each step, um, we add this all up, because these cases are disjoint. We get a final answer like this. minus k, uh, plus 4 minus 1, choose 8 minus k, k going from 0 to 4. Oh gosh. Okay, we get a final answer like this. That's the point. The final answer is 1,056. <laughs> <laughs> We're almost done. So that's the spirit of what we call combinatorial reasoning. It's a careful balance of mathematical seasoning. You can't take this class unless you've had calculus. But where does it come in? Sometimes it's a plus. But the rhyme is getting long, and I can't explain. Taylor's series jacked the house in generating function ways. And also set theory provides a nice program to set up inclusion, exclusion using Sven's diaphragm. <laughs> Oops, I think I meant to say something else. Venn diagrams are like Santa's enumeration elves. Sven diaphragm, Venn diagram. <laughs> so that concludes the case of enumerative combinatorics. The rap has gone long in endless loops of rhetorics. So let me just leave you with a question on a will in my mind. This oh, one. that one. Yeah. Um, why does the sequence a sub n uh, given by a sub n is equal to 1 over n plus 1 uh, times 2n choose n have the generating function, the beautiful generating function? Awesomely beautiful generating function. One minus square root of one minus four x. Should write that down, Eddie. Um, so I'll leave you with that question on my mind. Or better yet, take home exam, combinatorics. Shut that off. <laughs> <laughs> Think about that, that generating function thing. It's called a Catalan number, A sub n.